Hey everyone, so <coughs> I have half an hour to kill and I'm in the airport at Heathrow so what's the better time to play some 15 turn chess? <laughs> Yeah, I'm on my way to California, so it's going to be good. And I'll still try and do some streaming, of course. <coughs> right, okay. So you won't have to watch me horrifically play a Sicilian this game. So instead, aha, uh -huh. so this is <coughs> a sideline in D4 lines where they play Bishop F4, which is called the London system. And the way I approach this as black is by pretending I'm white again and just pretend that I've got a ratty and white is playing a slav if they were black. So I'm a tempo down but I feel like you know it's not too important that I'm a ten tempo down. It probably is but like I don't know. I mean it's fine maybe I'll play bishop b7 just to I don't know, maybe <laughs> win on G2. I was thinking like to stop him playing F4, but he can't play F4 anyway. Uh, anyway, <coughs> it's not too important. Yeah, so... I feel like casting is fine. Like They might try like kind of like H4, H5 stuff to attack my king side, but, you know, it's a long game. I shouldn't be worried about it. So here I will play d6, knight bd7, rook c8, rook c7, queen a8, and build up some pressure against white's king side. <coughs> Hope you guys like the Christmas tunes in the background. Yeah, I've got to remember to stop and start the recording because I've tried everything and literally nothing improves the sound quality. I think um, what I have to do is actually uh, <coughs> pay for the full version of the streaming software I use. Um, then I can improve the sound quality, but I don't want to do that because you have to pay a load each month. Right. So I do have to calculate whether e5 is good for him, but I do have the square knight d5. Hmm. And do I take on d4 now? I feel like I want to take on d4 once my rook is on c8 at least. Or ideally if both rooks are on the c5. I don't know if that's realistic to hope for. I'm just thinking of continuing my plan of developing. I don't have too many options. Huh? There's no like my H5 and hitting this pawn or anything. Because this, you know, the London is a very solid system with the pawn on C3. I mean the only thing with knight bd7 is the blocks the defense of this pawn, so if e5 then maybe this pawn is looking slightly weak, so maybe like queen c7 could be a shout, but then I don't like having this discovered pin on my queen. Yeah, I think we'll just do this. I think this is fine. So yeah, if push, I think I just ignore it and play knight d5, and then bishop drops back to g3, and then maybe I can take once and play e6.
I'm just looking at um, knight h5, and if bishop here, h6, and then g5, and if knight here, bishop goes back to e3, then maybe I've got e5. I don't know if e5 is something I want to play here. I don't think it's necessary. Hmm. I guess I can just continue my time with rook c8. I don't mean that's bad or anything. Yeah, why not? I've got to be, I don't know if I have to worry about the move a4 actually, because I can't play a6 now. But I think if a4 then, why not just rook c7, if a5, then I can just allow him to take, take, maybe? But then he gets the open a file, so that seems like a turn. Okay, he didn't do that. Uh, Now, if rook c7, I'm on the diagonal of this bishop. I don't know if I'm on that. Yeah, like I don't want to double up on the seed bar if the seed bar never opens. So maybe I should open it now. And then move like takes. And then. Yeah, I feel like this should be bad. Takes, and then rook takes, and then maybe queen a8. And I know he has the seed bar at that point, but. if there's anything more interesting I can try. Right. <coughs> so the idea is the bishop and queen are like a battery ram against this e4 pawn, maybe the knight and g pawn in some lines. So right now I'm not winning this pawn, I can't bring another attacker to it. White's got the C file, everything seems pretty pretty well defended. I don't know how I can start attacking him without making big weaknesses of my own. I'm just looking at ideas of E5 maybe, and then bring my rook to E8, maybe rook to E8 first and then E5. Then at least this knight can get into the game to knight c5 maybe. Aha! Okay. So knight c5 looks like the obvious move. Just a uh, waste, like force him to move the bishop somewhere. And if he doesn't, then maybe I can get this bishop to be better. But also, look at this bishop. Suddenly, this bishop has a huge long diagonal. Like, I better stop and start. Yeah, just so the sound quality is a little bit better. Um, let's have a think. Hmm. So I feel like maybe I can snag the people. Um, but how? So knight h5, force the bishop to move and then take the fourth. If knight h5 and bishop g5.
<laughs> ah, right, there should be something here. I feel like I'm very sluggish this game. <laughs> no, I need to be better than this. Um, I don't know how I can bring an extra defender to this point. Oh, this is really annoying. I'm thinking also knight g4, knight e5. Ah, I guess knight g4, then I'm threatening this pawn if he defends, and knight e5. Is that good for me or not? I mean, knight can just take, and I feel like this knight isn't doing too much on that square. I need to think of something to see then. <laughs> or maybe knight c5 and knight fd7, but then he's got moves like b4 that could be a mm. That is a really obvious move here that I'm just completely missing. I can also knight here if bishop moves, and I can even. S can I sack the problem there? Yeah, I should think of it, I should decide to move quickly. But I spent like god knows how long in this game. Again, I don't need to panic. Maybe I can take the c-file for myself, as this battery ram is now closed off. And once my queen is here, then maybe my queen can get into play, I can reopen these tactical ideas. It's hard to say, unfortunately. But I definitely don't think d5 was necessary, it just gives me ideas of different plans. Like before I was kind of struggling to know what to do. Also I have no mouse, just using touchpads, so I probably should not let myself get into time trouble. Okay, I mean like, okay let's think about what d5 does for him. So d5 maybe this square he can try and get a piece in there, but it, you know it's pretty well defended right now. Uh, okay, so his knight can hop to d4. But apart from this square, I don't know what else d4 really brings. Ah, I guess it blunted my battery ram. But it gives me squares as well to use, so let's see if I can make the most of it. So what can he do? Like if he ignores it, I take his rook. So he can capture my rook and then surely queen takes as the best. Gain this open fire. Um, if he moves his knight, he'll be defending the rook with the bishop. If he moves the knight here, what am I planning? Mm. Ah, if he moves the knight there though, then maybe... Okay, knight c5, I'm still not winning this pawn. Mm. I think I've just got to play some moves and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, my flight leaves at 1.45 and it's 12.24 right now and there's no information about the gate for another 15 minutes, so I should be alright.
So, what, uh, what to do here? I don't know, I always look at sacrifices as like a <laughs> instinct, but okay. So knight c5 is definitely a kind of move, but if bishop moves back I don't know what I'm really doing. Uh, this pawn is now defended, so I guess I could go pawn here. Oh wait, pawn up? Doesn't that... Okay, it doesn't win the rook because this fish is still guarding. But... That looks annoying. Okay. I feel like it's forcing his pieces backwards. Yeah, go on, let's play it. <coughs> so I understand how this pawn will be attacked once the knight moves, so let's hit knight a5. But you know, I can defend that with a6. I don't really mind him taking my bishop because I feel like my bishop's not very good on this score. But I think I'll zap the rook first, force his bishop back. So maybe after knight moves out I can also play b4 to avoid losing that pawn. But do I wanna zap this? I don't know. I could play knight c5 because he can't take my pawn because I'm taking on e4. I think that would be a nice line, but I think after knight c5, then you can play b4. Uh, and then I can take him. And then... a6. And if the bishop just retreats... Then I can go a6 again. I don't know, I like that. Alright, let's try it. And hope that he takes the pawn, then it'll be a bit more interesting. Mm. Now I can also play queen d8, because at least the knight can recapture the bishop, and then maybe my queen can come to b6. But then he's got a bishop on e3. So maybe that's a different idea. I can try. I, I don't think white's better or anything. I think black's completely fine in this position. So let's have a think. So if the bishop retreats, then I need to get my pieces more active, which pieces aren't very active. This bishop could be improved, maybe I can reroute to g4. But then if bishop c8, h3, then is there any scope for this bishop out there? I guess bishop d7. Yeah, so he's played that. Um, My, my instinct is to just take the bishop.
can also take this pawn and sacrifice. Does that do anything or win this pawn? Okay, please got this pawn. Nah, it's not really worth it. Uh, if I take, then bishop here, he brings his knight in. Or knight here, and then I can play queen c8, and if bishop moves somewhere, then what am I doing? At least I have control of the file, and I can play a6, but then he's got this knight coming in pretty quick. Hmm. Do you know what other choices do I have though? I don't really want to retreat, otherwise I'm going to lose the pawn. Okay, let's take this and see where it goes, because maybe I can get the bishop active, or something. So I don't know if queen c8, that would probably help him develop. I'm not even threatening back ramp because he's always got queen back here. So... A6 seems logical, maybe an F knight here. What can I do? Alright, let's just play it. We don't have too much time. I don't know if Queen C8 is a good because I don't even have back rank, it's just helping him like gain a move in his mind. Okay, so I feel like, why not just pawn up, it's good. Harass that bishop. I can also play bishop c8 here. So then knight can come in. Hey, firstly let's see what he... What his choice is after this. Because if my bishop... If he takes my knight, then this is surely good for me. Because my bishop's then guarding my backward e7 pawn, and then I can play bishop c8 very comfortably and like, I don't know, try and utilize my two bishops, even though the position is quite blocked. And if the bishop just moves back, then what ideas do I have? Hmm. Okay, so he took so he should take my bishop, I think. I don't know. If all the pieces trade off and the queens are just left on, who is this better for? Uh, okay, I can threaten queen c8 now. But if knight comes in... Maybe bishop c8, but then this knight will hop in. But then queen here. Nah, I don't know. Um, maybe I can just force the issue now. Also, I'm looking at e5 for some reason, maybe no, e6 is very really good. If e6 pawn takes, then I take here. If e6, then knight just pops in. This knight hops in. I can maybe attack this one. Maybe e6 is a tricky move. Yeah. I feel like it's the kind of move that I want to play. Uh, 
Uh, it's kind of weak, it's kind of weak, but like, also, okay, so if he just hops in with his knight, then pawn takes, pawn takes, and then I feel like I can attack this base and then dislodge this knight, so like, oh shit, has it just blundered? Okay, let's, <laughs> let's rethink, if I take him and pawn takes, if pawn takes and knight takes, then I am um, literally just going to run the pawn. Uh, that's annoying. Actually, I don't know if I am. Like, I'm calculating some lines where this pawn is weak because I've got the bishop. Uh, at least that's something concrete I'm looking at. You know what, I actually want to take it. The reason being is if pawn takes pawn 8, knight takes, then I think queen c8 is very strong. Like, let's go down this line. If queen c8, like if he blocks here then I've got back rank mate. I don't think he can take this pawn. And if like the knight moves back here then I can check and pick up the knight. If he goes knight here then I can check and then I'm picking up the knight with my bishop. Yeah, this is a poison pawn. But you know, right now maybe he can play Queen B3 or something. Shit, he's doing it. I don't know if he can. Maybe he's played something that I haven't noticed, but Queen C8 looks good to me. So really, like, if this actually works, I should be seeing all of this stuff before playing E6. I am then playing E6, but I didn't even notice this trade and stuff. And I probably wouldn't have played it after analysing this line. But I guess this is what you have to do, you have to like look that extra step further. Now where can this knight move? Is it this close? So I guess you've also got to be really careful about your background, like there's always weaknesses there. probably start like <laughs> um, getting ready to go as well. <laughs> so it's probably good that this game is finishing. I mean I bet he's gonna play a move now that just like completely wrecks me and I'll like that or something. Okay so if I take the knight then I can go a pawn up. Uh, I can take, oh no, but ah, oh, my g6 pawn is hanging, oh shit. Well that'll teach me to not be complacent. Fuck. Oh wait, okay, I can play queen back rank check though, first. Yeah, that looks the best idea. Get rid of that queen, and then I can take this pawn, and then I'm just a pawn up. Okay, so I guess the bishop takes because then I maintain the passport. But, uh. Yeah, okay, I don't know. So I know he's got knight here. I sh maybe should have calculated this a bit more. I just thought I could take here, but of course I can't. Because then the knight's guarding. Uh, okay, let's maybe get our king active as well, but then this pawn is dropping as well, I'm not careful. Maybe bishop here, pawn him and pawn up again. I don't know. I really don't know. Like, obviously I can't take this h2 pawn because then he's got g3 which traps my bishop. Maybe later if this king has advanced very far then I could take it, but... I don't think that's gonna happen. Gotta keep an eye on the time as well. <laughs> Definitely not missing my flight over a chess game. 
So I guess this like stops him from like trying to attack my pawn. I mean he can and then... I mean worse comes to worse I offer him a draw or something. That's kind of depressing. I, I want to go for the win. Um, king here. Or maybe pawn here, pawn here. So then his king gets very active. I don't know if I want his king to be so active. Uh, but I do like that pawn supporting the bishop there. Yeah, let's go for it. I wonder if I can try harass this knight with my king. Okay, let's do this. Oh, but the problem is, maybe knight here then, and takes, takes, and then he's taking here, and then he's got loads of extra pawns. Keep an eye on this pawn, perhaps. Put some pressure on this pawn. Oh, this is not looking very good anyway. I guess I shouldn't play chess. <laughs> I'm about to catch a flame. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, I think you call this an addiction. I guess if this king goes to this pawn, then I can start pushing this pawn up. Okay. Let's see if he wants to draw. Ah, uh, uh, okay, does that not let my pieces in in some way? I'm going to play this super dodgy move. The idea being if he takes and my king has more entry, I think. I don't know if that's a good idea. Ah, I can't believe I screwed that up. Was I never even a pawn up, maybe? I don't know. Um, maybe a bishop here, then the knight is running out of squares. And also I'm hitting this pawn. So if he plays a move like that, then... So I want to come here, but he's probably going to play g4. But then I can move this bishop and then let my king come in. But if I go here, then he can go king here. And I don't really want to let his king in. Although I then can start running with the pawn. That's the case. Alright, so he's doing this, okay. So I want to push my pawn, I mean my king. I think this is my best shot. I guess 15-10 isn't really half an hour, it's more like way more than half an hour. Uh, let me think. Yeah, I should be fine, I should be fine. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know me personally, I'm always last minute to everything. So, this is how it be. Yeah, I don't know, like, I'm actually fancying my chances, but I'm a very optimistic chess player, which often, like, bites me in the back, like, I don't know, maybe I'm supposed to be drawing, and I just play a move that tries to win. I can still think about winning here, even though I should be fighting for a draw. You know, drawing's boring. Um, okay, so maybe A4 I should worry about as well, creating that pass form for him probably be very worried about. But if I can like sack my bishop for this pawn and then take these pawns then I'd be fine. So I don't know. Maybe 
Maybe check in the Titus. Or I can push the pawn as well. I feel like I want to do that actually. Ah, oh, god, every move here is like so critical. Maybe bishop here actually. But then knight here. I can't really calculate this. Ah. Uh, Do I want my bishop on this side or on that side? My idea about this is that after knight here and pawn up check, then this knight is tied down to defending this pawn apart from a3. And then mm -hmm. I can't even go bishop here. Shit. I think knight there is just like the best move. So maybe I don't need to play. Ah, so he's gone back. Okay. This definitely makes me want to push. Because if he comes here, then my king comes in. If he comes this way, then I can push again, maybe. And either way, my king is coming into these points. So I think it was critical earlier that he played g4 to stop my king coming in. And now I really do fancy my chances. Luckily I've got a big increment of 10 seconds, so it should be alright. <laughs> kind of want to find out what gate I'm supposed to go to. I'm pretty much in the right area though. Okay. Let's go. Maybe this is very risky stuff, but what else am I supposed to do? Maybe you can play g4 now. But then king here, pawn on, king has to go here. Then my king can come here and start to win this pawn. Yeah, I think I'm doing fine here. I mean, I think his best bet is to go a3 and try and get his knight involved. Maybe not right now, but as a plan. But yeah, I'm definitely playing d2 next because that forces King to like give up space. See, past pawns are very powerful. Uh, okay, so he's being clever. Well, I guess I can push and then take. Is that not good? Let's do that. Like, if I took the pawn, then he takes my pawn and then, you know. But here, I can do it this way. Yeah, I think I want to do that. Always checking for any tricks he can try. So if knight here, then I guess I'll just go bishop back. I want to keep defending this pawn. But then he can go knight here. But then I can go pawn on. And I'm doing very well. Or am I? Then he can start pushing here. Oh, I don't know. But I think actually... Am I fu- Okay, let's... This first. Oh shit, no, I can't go there because knight check. And then king here takes, takes. Takes, takes. Oh god, I don't want to try that. Do I have to allow that? No, I can play. Okay, I'm running out of time as well. Alright, let's go for it. I don't think. So I can't go here because of a fork as well. Mm. So let's see what happens. <coughs> I feel like I should be losing this because the knight can get back in time to stop this.
and he can just win this one. And then it's a knight and corner pawn versus king, and I don't know. <laughs> I probably should know who wins that. But also, if I can let this get sacked quickly, then. Oh shit, I just blended the pawn. I wanna die. But then pawn on. Why did I just allow that? So bad. Pawn on and then king here and then like... I guess he's still winning this pawn, I don't really know. Yeah, this is just really annoying. These are the kind of end games. It's like good to have like some kind of working knowledge of how to play them. I don't really see what what why he's not taking this pawn. Like I can't smoke. I don't think. Yeah, he just stops. He's got. Well, I guess knight takes from king here, so he can't come this way. So he has to come check. Let's see what happens, and then if knight here check, then king can go here, and then king here, king here. Am I like pressuring this pawn? And if king here, then push king there, and then king here, and maybe I'm blocking off the knight from getting involved. So the king has to kind of protect this e2 square for the knight to happen. I think maybe I'm drawing this. But I don't know, I don't know how I could have played better. I think... Ah, oh, I feel like e6 is still fine, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the line he played was just fine, like, and I missed it. But... I feel like maybe there was something better I could have done. Or maybe this whole knight coming in and taking these pawns was always a threat, which I didn't think about. I think this is a very critical moment in the game. Because obviously he can draw at any moment. But if he goes for a win, then he might lose. So knight c3 check, king here, knight here check, king here, king here, king here. Yeah, like, I don't know. But then he can't ever take this pawn, like, and start just moving back and forth. So ideally he wants his knight guarding this pawn. Which he can do, he can play knight c3 and then a4 and I can never take the knight otherwise this pawn is running and the knight is always guarding the pawn. So if knight c3, a4 and then he can get his king involved. So if knight c3, king here, a4 and if I push pawn, king here I have to try and promote this but then the knight can always sack and then this pawn is running. So I think this is just completely lost. He knows what he's doing. Right, yeah, exactly. So maybe King here is the best bet. Yeah, A4 is just so strong. So I feel like I have to go here. Okay. But you also might miss that idea. I mean, if A4. Right, let's go here. I think if he starts playing a4, I think I can actually make it back in time. a4, king f4. 
here, 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 here. Oh no, shit, I don't even make it. Ah, if A4 though, then maybe pawn push. A5. Pawn push. No shit, this just, this just loses because I'm outside of the square. So I think I had to play King D4 here. But I think that was losing to A4. And I don't see what I'm supposed to do. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Maybe I can think of stalemate ideas as well. I don't know, I guess I can hope he plays knight e2 now and then I get back in time with king e4. I think mean, knight e2 would be a blunder, but obviously he's not going to do that. Uh, Ah, there's just lost. Damn it, Michael. So, losing this game puts me into the 1700s. Very sad. Exactly. Uh, Yeah, I don't think there's any stalemate tricks either. I think I've got auto promote to a queen, so I don't even get a choice. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll play on a little bit just in case, but he's not gonna screw up, surely. So, yeah, I don't know what. I think just like being that pawn down in the end game, and I'm sure there's ways I could have not lost, but like, yeah, I don't know, like, yeah, I was hoping he'd get his knight involved because then there's more chances of him cocking this up. Oh, I've only got one move anyway. So if he moves the king, is still, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna do that. Nice. Well, um, definitely need to go through that one, because that was a shocker. 17 new shocker. Um, but yep, I gotta catch a plane, so I will see you guys around. See ya. Okay, back on stream. So, <clears throat> uh, you guys will be glad to know that I made the train, um, made the plane. And I got to LA, uh, been in San Diego the last few days, and finally I've had a little bit of time to do a bit more chess. Um, so, uh, about the game, um, firstly it's always a bad idea to try and play in a rush, but not only in a rush, but like when you're thinking about other things, because um, you know, you're not going to be completely focused on the position, and to play good chess you really do have to be focused. Uh, but having said that, uh, when I actually looked through the game, there wasn't too many places where I made any big mistakes. It was more like small inaccuracies that built up to me losing the game. So the first thing I wanted to point out was that my whole system at the beginning is completely fine in the sense that this is just a ratty position with the colors reversed, as I said in the video. Now, in this instance, when white plays e4 at this point, um, it's important to note that I haven't committed my knight and it leads to an interesting line where I can now play c takes d4 and you know if I uh, take this pawn too early then um, maybe white can recapture with the e pawn and then white has some play on the e file against my backward e pawn so e4 allows me to take on d4 
and when he recaptures with the C pawn, maybe I should have a look at what happens if knight takes pawn as well. But firstly, we'll look at this. So if C recaptures, then I've got this knight C6 move. Now, the idea of this is that it threatens two things. One line, it can take the pawn on d4. So if, let's say, white just plays a move like h3 to maybe give his bishop more space, um, I can take on here and then play e5, forking the pieces. And although it's not like a definitive advantage, I definitely have some play. Like, for instance, um, let's say in this position, if white were to castle and I can take this pawn, play e5. And if he tries to hang on to the pawn like this, then things start to get a bit dodgy with his center with moves like rook e8, pinning the pawn to the queen. And even if he thinks he can like support the pawn with a move like this, you know, I am I can even sacrifice my knight because I will win the piece back with the move d5. And here it gives me like, I don't know, minus 0.8. So it really likes my position and it looks as if I'm going to be a pawn up in this position. So after castling, uh, I also have another idea um, with knight b4, which is also pretty good. And the idea is that um, I'm just controlling some key squares, namely the c2 square. Like, even if he tries to shoo my knight away, I can attack his rook, and then I can pester this bishop. And wherever the bishop goes, um, if he goes here, then I'm winning a pawn in the center, now that my bishop on g7 is free after this knight moves. Or if he moves back to here, then I can take this bishop off and then suddenly my black squared bishop is going to be really good and I haven't compromised my structure with a move like e5. So these are some ideas to think about next time when my opponent plays e4. And I will really try to delay this knight bd7 until he plays e4 in which then I can play knight c6 and get these variations. I'll very quickly just look at what happens if... Uh, knight were to take like instinctively it looks like oh if knight were to take i just play e5 and fork the pieces so there's no knight takes d4 which in some positions it is possible but yeah so that's um some opening analysis uh let's continue um so we just played some kind of standard moves um this kind of system is what I often do, but maybe in th these kind of positions where white has played e4, it's better to like try and play what I was looking at earlier with c takes d4 and knight c6. But still, it's not like the end of the world here. Uh, until perhaps this move is the first mistake, which is the move b5. And the problem with b5 is that it gives up this a5 square. Like before the b6 pawn is defending the square, and suddenly b5 gives it up which allowed him to play knight a5, which was the best move for him in the position. So really a better move would be something like knight c5, uh, attack his bishop, gain a tempo on it, and then play bishop a6, pinning this knight to the queen. So this knight cannot move, otherwise the queen would be taken. So if white were to defend with a move like this, then black can now play a move like e6 and get a bit tricky in the center. And... You know, I, you know, this knight can't win the d6 pawn. Um, if bishop takes the d6 pawn, then I'm taking his d pawn and liquidating the center to my advantage with my uh, fianchettoed bishops, uh, because fianchettoed bishops are favored in an open position. So these are definitely some, this would have been a better uh, continuation to play. Like bishop a6 is an important thing to think about like right now with the bishop on b7 is biting against granite is doing nothing hitting these pawns but on a6 it's suddenly a lot better so i should really look at the potential of my pieces and try and utilize them um, right so after b5 knight a5 and i swapped off my rooks and now i bring my knight in um, some trades happened and you see how my bishop on b7 would have been much nicer on this diagonal except now it's kind of blocked in but you know this was still pretty fine for me like it was about equal in this position now after e6 this was a slight inaccuracy and we'll go into y but computer suggested maybe bishop c8 keep that bishop on and now play a move like e6 like note that like 
move, moves like queen g6 to attack my d6 pawn um, you know stuff like this can happen and I will probably end up a pawn up so the idea of liquidating the center is a good idea to make use of my bishops but I just had to time it right like if I played e6 in this position um, he in fact had uh, a line which was very good for him um, after takes takes instead of taking on e6 he could have just played the immediate e5 with pressure on g6 and my position's kind of crumbling but in the line knight takes e6 queen c8 um, and now e5 then I could have saved myself with a move like king f7 and I would just about be holding this like this like the computer says it's about equal and like yeah I think I agree like I can't really see a way that white gains an advantage but what I should have seen was after queen c1 which also looks okay I should note that before I play queen c1 I really need to calculate up to here because this is actually all forced after queen c1 check there is nothing I can do that stops the knight hopping to c7 attacking my a6 and b5 pawns and I'm going to lose material so really here king f7 is forced but I didn't calculate I played queen c1 thinking oh okay I can top off the queens take this pawn back you know pawns are equal like I calculated up to here but I needed to calculate one more move further just to spot that um, you know I'm dropping pawns now in this position, uh, what I should really do is push this pass pawn because this pass pawn is going to be my only chance to get play in the game. So if I played d5 and started to bring my king up, then I can even, um, and if he brings his king to the center, which is the right thing to do, then I can even play greedy moves like bishop takes h2. And okay, maybe he can just play like g3 and waste the tempo. I mean like stop me from doing this line but then I presume I can play a move like d4, king d5 and get my king very central and give myself very good drawing chances being the pawn down. But if he tries to bring his king forward then I can actually do stuff like this and even though it looks like my bishop is trapped here, um, there are different lines where um, it looks as if black is doing fine like for instance here black can try playing h4 the reason being is in this kind of position you sacrifice the bishop um, note that h takes g3 is apparently losing um, because I guess this pass pawn isn't as much of an issue because the king is still relatively close but if you play the move g5 like obviously this is very hard to calculate but it's just interesting that the bishop can be sacrificed in this corner because you have this pass d pawn that can cause him threats. And if you see, after g takes h4, g takes h4, king h3, we have d4, exclamation mark. I really should give it one. Because after king takes h4, we notice that after d3, this king, if you imagine a square, is outside the square and therefore can't reach this pawn in, in time. So the knight has to try and defend, in which the king can gain some space to a position where the knight can't hold this like this is just drawn like I'm not going to be able to promote with best play but he's not going to be able to win either like, I guess the king will go to c3 and b2 and this white king is completely misplaced on the side of the board going back um, another idea apart from h4 to sacrifice the bishop in that sense is also just to push my past d pawn and if the white king tries to chase um, the black bishop then things can go very ugly like if he even tries to take then d3 is just winning and there's nothing white can do to stop me promoting so it's interesting to note that even though it looks as if you know bishop takes h2 is just completely bad you're losing your bishop and it gets trapped it's worth noting that with this pass d pawn then like ideas can arise and like having a more active king even with the bishop lost it can lead to drawn or even winning positions uh, instead I played bishop c3 to kind of tie this knight down to defending this pawn but he started to get his king more active and now my king is kind of um, a bit more passive but it could definitely be more active and okay so I'll just skip forward a few moves where I try and bring my king into play he keeps his eye on the pawn and here I actually get into a position where I'm actually holding this 
My pawn has got very far, it's got to d2, it's very close to promoting. Um, I have a pawn controlling these uh, pawns on the queen side, king side, and a pawn here controlling these pawns on the queen side. Now, here, what I did was I played bishop takes b4, which is a mistake, because what I should note is that after g4, which is the best move in the position, I can't play king f4 because of this fork. So I've really put my bishop on a very bad square, despite winning a pawn. So what I could have played instead was actually just play king e5. And the point is here that I can just move my king back and forth, these two squares, e5 and d5. And by keeping the king central, I actually hold everything together. And it's very hard for white to progress. The only way I can really see white progressing is by potentially pushing his h and g pawns to try and... Um, force my king to try and win over here and then maybe he can win this d-pawn and then like win over here but if like um so firstly white can try defending this b-pawn so um there's no ideas of me taking this pawn and after i just sit back and forth then maybe i've uh, and if he tries to play g3 to play h4 and make a break then i've got moves like bishop e5 and i can even give up this pass pawn to take this pawn and now being the pawn down I really have a good control of both sides of the board stopping my opponent from making any progress and this will be drawn. Now you might think that okay um, I can bring my bishop back to e5 because my king happens to be on d5 but what if he wastes the tempo to force my king back to e5 before playing this g3 move. So White can try something like before g3, he can play king d1, and you know, as I said, if you just sit back and forth here, it's drawn. So after king e5, the bishop can no longer go back to e5 up, but upon g3, but here, black can try king f5, and here, um, white can still make no progress. For instance, um, if knight b7 to fork the king, then black can just go back to e5. Uh, I'm just wondering here actually what if king, king here, ah so I think against this black bishop can go to e5 pressuring this square and I'm going to be winning the pawns on the queen side at the expense of losing this pawn but the position will be holdable and drawn. So bishop takes b4 is definitely the wrong idea and after king f4 it's just a complete mistake because I, you know I saw this in the game I saw okay I sacrificed the bishop you know my mind was okay I want to catch my plane I don't want to so I just wanted a forcing line to see what happens. Um, I could have played uh, a different move like king back to g6 but my king gets a lot more passive and I'm probably still struggling to hold this. So definitely being greedy, winning this pawn, putting my bishop on this suboptimal square, maybe wasn't the best idea, but king f4 is definitely a blunder. And after knight d3 check, it's really important to note the power of this knight. So there were some lines where I sacrificed the bishop and the position was still drawn, but the difference there is that if you compare this position to a position earlier, um, such as uh, this, uh, wait, which one do I want exactly? I want, I want this one. So you see here I've sacrificed the bishop but the key thing is the king is all the way on h4 in this place whereas the king in this position when the bishop is sacrificed the king is very central. So the king is not misplaced at all and because of this black has no winning chances and in fact is completely lost because the knight covers the queening square and you know I went on to lose this and in my video I was explaining like live how this was completely lost with whatever I tried to do. So it's really important to note that if you're going to sacrifice the bishop you've really got to be careful of your opponent's king's position. Um, uh, earlier in the game like this premature e4 could be met with c takes d4 now that e, the e pawn can't recapture and I can play with more uh, central plans of knight c6 and e5 or sacrificing my knight to gain this fork uh, and yeah just some like just some small inaccuracies that could, could just be improved upon and I will definitely take that into next game and future games so I hope you found some of that useful and I will see you next time